Africa's coast has a rich cultural heritage. Whether you catch a glimpse of it from the surface or fully immerse yourself in the underwater world, when you think of our underwater heritage, what comes to mind? Is it the amazing marine life that can be experienced off our coast? Or is there more? And what can we learn from what we find there? There is a big part of our history to be discovered. This is Africa's underwater cultural heritage. Underwater cultural heritage actually has a number of uh, meanings depending on the, where it is found and where it is located. But universally, uh, as per UNESCO, is uh, all traces of human remains that uh, have been underwater for more than 100 years. Underwater cultural heritage, for me, describes um, any cultural heritage that's submerge or just within a body of water or waterways that is involved with culture. Underwater cultural heritage uh, is a uh, trace of every human interaction with the seas, you know, which is cultural, has historical uh, significance and archaeological significance as well. For thousands of years, there has been trade and exchange of goods along Africa's coastline. Not only did we travel to foreign lands, but we attracted many to our shores too. So think of all this history that lies buried in the sea. Think of the knowledge of our ancestors and how they lived, or of the ships and their cargo that never completed their voyages. In general, people uh, think that underwater heritage is only shipwreck, especially colonial shipwreck or uh, transatlantic shipwreck. Today in Africa, underwater heritage is uh, linking uh, communities, uh, especially fishermen communities. We know shipwreck uh, can uh, uh, give a better conservation of marine biodiversity, and uh, the fishermen know that. That's why they contribute to protect this, uh, this shipwreck. Underwater cultural heritage to the African people uh, means a lot. When you talk in terms of uh, slavery, there are so many connections because we had a lot of interactions with the Portuguese, with the English, you know, and several others. So UCH, in that regard, for Africans, talks about, you know, how people were moved from Africa to, to the Americas and several other places, you know, changing uh, civilization uh, globally. Besides the, the, the underwater cultural heritage has a material thing, we have the material aspects that are really, really important to, to understand. And I would give an example if you look to the Eastern African coast, especially what is known as the, the Swahili coast. We share a lot in common, uh, starting from uh, Somalia, Kenya, Tanzania, and part of Mozambique. These communities share a way of living that is quite similar in exploring the maritime uh, resources uh, the way they dress, the way they dance, the way they sing, even the language is similar. So all of that was only uh, possible because of the strong network that was established along the, 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 the coastline. And these people were interacting uh, together over centuries. Underwater archaeology has helped us discover the amazing wonders of Africa's history and how cultures interacted, helping us understand the world we live in today. There are many UNESCO World Heritage Sites along Africa's coast, and often under the ocean around them, one can find underwater cultural heritage sites, which are also in need of protection. When I'm asked why did UNESCO set up uh, the 2001 Convention on the Protection of the Underwater Culture Heritage, um, then the answer is actually very easy, because we need it. We need a convention, what is a treaty binding states, um, to bring everyone together in the fight to protect the submerged heritage of this world. Um, 
In 2000, 2001, when this convention was, uh, you know, elaborated, there was a huge issue with the pillaging, large-scale pillaging of the shipwrecks. Um, of course, with the adoption of the convention that didn't disappear like that, but working together, bringing states to ratify, uh, we have seen an improvement. Uh, the convention is important because um, the heritage we have underwater, uh, you know, uh, resources that could disappear, could, you know, be destroyed if it's not protected. So with those regulations, we have the hope that those things can be well protected, managed, and then uh, sustainably utilized for the future. The UNESCO 2001 uh, Convention is such a strong and a powerful uh, document that helped uh, first prevent this treasure hunting activity, and second, it set the basic aspects on how uh, the scientific uh, research should be done. It helped uh, on setting the guidelines on how material should be preserved and how the material can be also displayed to the public. Kenya has invested heavily on, on capacity building, training, and infrastructure development. We have trained uh, lab technicians, people can conserve at first from underwater. We have trained and our archaeologists like myself have been trained by the government. So that expertise has allowed me to now be able to train other people. And with UNESCO support we've been able to do two trainings here in Kenya for people from different parts of sub-Saharan Africa. And now we have a pool of professionals in underwater archaeology. This submerged part of our heritage is part of our national treasure to be appreciated by all, not just a few, which is why we must protect it. In case you find an underwater culture heritage site, meaning an ancient shipwreck, a sunken structure, then first of all, don't touch, don't destroy, don't damage, don't take anything if there's not an imminent danger, um, and inform the authorities. You know, the Port authorities, uh, the museum, the archaeologists. Uh, if you don't know whom to address, UNESCO has actually uh, a list of the responsible authorities on its website. When we, we discover a site underwater, uh, the first thing we do is to confirm what type of a site it is, the typology of that particular site. It could be a landscape, it could be uh, a construction, maybe a monument of, uh, you know, you know, stone or whatever kind of monument, or it could be a shipwreck. Uh, thereafter, then we need, we do a survey to establish the extent, how big the site is. Uh, then we move in and do a detailed uh, study of what perhaps the site contains. Or if it's a shipwreck, we look at what maybe was the cargo that was in there una sehemu tofauti tofauti ambazo zimetokea kuna zingine zinatoka Afrika ziko za kutoka Afrika kuna udongo wa kutoka bara la Asia kule kuanzia tina India hapo za kutoka Arabuni hizi ndo nyingi upande upande kutoka kule our underwater cultural heritage is a window into our past helping us to understand our identity and our cultural diversity but there is much more we can gain from understanding and conserving these sites and artifacts. There's a lot. There's a lot of benefits that you can get from underwater cultural heritage. Like you can have tourism, you can have employment, new employment opportunities for people. You can have um, aquaculture, you can have blue economy investments. You can have a lot of possibilities. Now the local people protect, preserve, and sustainably utilize the maritime cultural heritage to make a living. And this is a very good example whereby we have opened ecotourism sites, we have been able to, to mitigate climate change that has been impacting on our sites through the local communities. Today, uh, what I'm doing uh, in my country in Senegal uh, is uh, to assist our Minister of Culture and our university 
uh, to build a program about uh, the management in general about uh, underwater cultural heritage by training a new student in this field because underwater archaeology is a really a new field in uh, our country, in sub-Saharan country and also to do uh, the first inventory of our underwater site and also uh, the uh, thing that we are doing now is uh, to try to do uh, uh, an itinerary about uh, diving tourism. You know, the benefit of protecting underwater culture heritage is first of all, you know, protecting our own past and identity. But there's more. 37% uh, of tourism today is based on cultural tourism, on cultural appreciation of sites. So, of course, protecting and showing underwater culture heritage sites can make a big impact on sustainable development. Um, protection of underwater cultural heritage is important because in most places we don't protect it and it's, it's lost. It's part of your history that you will never get back. Something that is somebody else's property now and you cannot get it back. You cannot identify yourself, your culture, where you came from before. So I think it's important to just keep that connection you have with the past and where you came from originally. Uh, underwater cultural heritage is very important. It's a resource that could be destroyed if it's not well and properly handled. And what we're doing right now, partnering with ocean scientists as underwater archaeologists to be able to do more and to be able to map you know, uh, uh, the, water, the oceans, the seas and all that is very important and crucial. Let us appreciate our heritage. Let us preserve our cultural heritage. You know, whatever we see that we don't understand it is, let's report this to the government. Let's put our cultural heritage together. Let's save it and let's protect it. It is our future and it's our life. As we have seen, across the African continent, passionate people are putting in great efforts to conserve our underwater cultural heritage. And there is still so much more to be uncovered in Africa's waters.